Good morning. My apologies for the accent. Obviously, if I say anything that uh, is slightly too English for you, tough. All right, you all don't speak English, so you should understand anyway. All right, even though it's a weird kind of English. Um, thanks for inviting me. Thank S, who's done all the hard work to get me here. Um, we're here for the next three days, actually, doing the rest of the next two days of the other workshop. Um, uh, to, just to start with, I want to just say a few things. First of all, uh, this is not cloning, right? No one's here to be told what to do. Everybody's here to think. Um, actually, when Esther said, can you cover this, this topic, I said, yeah, how long? And he said, three hours. And I said, probably take about three days. Because there's a hell of a lot to know about this. Last year, I was in uh, San Salvador doing something for ITF in Central America. And I pretty much worked with 30 key coaches from Central America, from all the different countries. And um, after six days of being on court from eight in the morning till six at night every day, uh, I left, got on the airplane, and started writing the things that we'd forgotten to talk about. <laughs> and after five pages, I decided to stop writing. There's so much to know in this space. And I always describe myself as the one-eyed man in the world of the blind. Right, there's this much to know about Ten and Under. I know this much, most people know that much which puts me here instead of being there. But you know what? There's all that bit over there that I have no clue about. And I also have the luxury of just doing this. I don't have to deal with complaining ladies at the club. I don't have to deal with the girls that want to text each other from one baseline to the other baseline whilst they're on the same floor. I don't have to deal with team practice. I don't have to deal with any of that stuff. All I have to deal with is 10 and under. So literally, I'll get up every morning and think about little kids and think about how we can improve that product. And 10 and under is by no means perfect. Um, big problems at the moment with girls tennis in 10 and under, uh, because all of a sudden people start looking at these little girls and going, wow, and they start treating them like they're 15, uh, when they're still very sensitive. Um, and certainly there's lots of other problems with competition. So there's no perfect Harry Potter magic wand, and we're not gonna pretend that we're, we here's a Harry Potter quickly as possible get them to the yellow ball as fast as they possibly can. And still there's a lot of us that perhaps think that that's what we're trying to do. This is just a way to get kids to a yellow ball. Um, and one of the challenges I'll, I'll throw out here is, as a kind of, you know, the home of American tennis almost, with the number of people that you have playing tennis, you should have a lot more tennis players. You have bright, intelligent kids that you get to teach in the most positive sporting environment in the world and you still don't have many players. And kind of that's why 10 and under fills that slot really well for the US. Um, right now, you know, Uzbekistan is statistically more successful than the US if you take the number of people playing. And that shouldn't be the case, really shouldn't be the case because you shouldn't be producing more players. So I want you to take that in mind all the way through and think about who you're teaching, who the kids are that you have, what you should be trying to get from them, how they are, uh, who they are in every other walk of life. We often think of ourselves as people that teach tennis, but really we need to think about ourselves as people that teach kids. And in that regard, um, you have to understand who you're teaching, how they think, how they grow, how they learn, and then think about what you do in your coaching. Because most of us were certified based on tennis technical and tactical, not emotional, cognitive, and physical which is actually the real key thing we should be thinking about. Who is this kid? What might be stopping them doing that? How do they think? Why might they not be listening? Why might they have to struggle to understand something we're trying to teach? So that's our journey, very fast journey. And I'm gonna present a lot of it today. Um, I'm gonna to ask you to come out and do a little bit, but if you came in your jeans or you came in something and you, you weren't ready to run around, that's fine. Because if we literally uh, workshop every single part of this, there's no way we're gonna get through even half of it in the three hours we've got. Okay. That said, I'm going to hang around for an hour afterwards. So if anyone wants to stay, discuss some you know, things that are doing their program, get some more advice from what you said, ask some more questions, that will be the time. I know people have got dash back to coaching for different venues. That's why we have this small window in the middle of the day. But if you want to stay around, that's what we'll do. Okay. Um, the other reason that we really want the US to be involved is because the US has the most money. So we get lots of nice things like cheap tennis balls all the way around the world because you buy most of the tennis balls. So the price goes down when the US does 10 and under. And also you produce great little videos like this.
Strange is coming to tennis. The kids are leading the way. It's called 10 and Under Tennis, and it's a fun way for your kids to really learn the game. With courts and equipment modified to fit them, kids will develop faster and better and enjoy themselves along the way. So get your kids involved now. With 10 and Under Tennis, every child can yeah, learn to Right, okay. Let's show you. I'm going to show you all the answers to everything we're going to do in the first five minutes. Is that all right? So the best storytellers tell you the whole story before you get there. Then you fill in the details. Then we'll go back Wait, to the details. Everyone understands the rule change. Everyone knows how they impacted. It all impacted everybody in the world, and everyone knows that 98% of all the ITF votes in the world went yes. That means Russia voted for it and Spain voted for it. All those countries that you hear don't use 10 and under. They all voted to use 10 and under and make it a rule. Okay, so. Every country also has its very own unique way of approaching things. That's why I said it's about not cloning. I work for the Dutch Federation, um, and so if you go to the Netherlands, if you drive three hours south, do you know where you are? Testing geography. <laughs> Global geography. Good job on asking George Bush, isn't it, really? Okay, all right, if you drive to three hours south, you're in Belgium. The only people more German than the Germans are the Belgians. They measure everything. Everything's technical. Everything has its own little progression. There are 778 pages in the Belgian 10 and under manual. <laughs> Over 300 lesson plans. Lesson one to 320. Okay? Which you're supposed to follow. Like that. They have a good 10 and under program, and then you go three hours north again, and you're back in Holland and in the Netherlands. They removed every reference to grip from the whole of the technical competencies all the way through. Because they believe in racket based control and form fullest function. So you've got two completely different tennis cultures, both doing 10 and under very, very well. So that's that one of the things I want you to understand. Your tennis, you know, if you look at the number of people playing, I also work with Norway. Norway has 200 coaches in the whole country, and half of those are Swedish. And 175 clubs in the whole country, and half of those are snowed in for most of the year. Right? So that's like less than is in a state. <clears throat> right? And they basically have a model of, that they go in one direction. So I want you to start thinking about maybe the good thing about the US, I, as an outsider, the thing I like is the diversity. If you're going to get Norway to move in one direction, I think that's quite simple. You get 100 of them, 200 coaches on board, and we're all cooking. Right? If you're going to get the US to move in the same direction, that's a whole different animal. That's like trying to race the Titanic with a toothpick, really. Just too big. So I think everyone has to look after their own backyard, determine what their model is, what their bus is, what their philosophy is, and how they go forwards. And that's what we do a lot. My company does a lot in this here in the US. We write curriculum for different people. So as I said, we've written them on Sport Time. We also wrote ones for um, the Lendl Clubs up in Connecticut. We wrote them for Midtown. Uh, we're, back, we're writing some stuff for IMG right now. They all have different philosophies on tennis. But they all were now implementing and getting involved in 10 and under. So it's, you have to sort of start going a little bit deeper than just, oh, it's 10 and under. You have to start understanding what you believe in tennis, what your core philosophies are. Yeah, and how you're going to deliver your 10 and under program and how that's different from somebody else's. I call it your bus. You want everyone in your team on the bus. You can't have everyone, anyone off the bus trying to pull the bus in a different direction or the worst is someone who pretends to be on the bus but they're really actually unscrewing the hubcaps as you go along. <laughs> yeah. So getting, there's no right or wrong in tennis. There's just belief and velocity. This is what I believe about tennis. This is where I'm going. I know you're going over there. That's fine. You go over there. Yeah, and that's what all the successful nations all around the world do. The French aren't running around listening to everybody else. The French are just doing what the French do. The Spanish are the same. 